morning church so i guess i need to begin with some disclaimer <laughs> on the costume uh, so um, as i started preparing uh, for the sermon last week i realized uh, the sunday would coincide with a festival the festival of onam uh and onam probably is the most important festival uh celebrated in my home state of kerala and by all keralites all across the world uh including uh, the one that runs the tea shop on the moon <laughs> some of the malus here knows <laughs> who i'm referring to uh so i i strayed a bit from my sermon preparation and began looking up at the back story of onam uh and the message for this morning began to take shape i'll keep the back story brief uh onam is an annual festival remembering a mythological king of kerala uh whose name is mahabali uh who was good and the kingdom prospered under his reign however he lost his kingdom uh in 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 a conspiracy plan by some of his enemies and he was sent away to the to, uh, he was sent in fact all the way down to the nether world as he was being sent down or as he was being pushed down uh, he was granted his one wish that he be allowed to come or to resurface once every year and so that he gets to see his kingdom again and he gets to see how his uh, how his uh, citizens are faring and so this festival is all about that annual return of that king uh, just to see how good uh, his land is how good kerala is today and how well the citizens are are doing and so it's, it's a time when everybody gets decked up they just even if the land is not as great as it is or it's still it's, it's great by the way it's god's own country uh, <laughs> uh and so people get decked up and you know they put on the best of stuff lots of fun lots of festivities but for folks like me the highlight of this festival is actually the onam meal uh which is a grand spread of 26 or 28 items delicious uh, it's all served on a banana leaf and so there you have it uh now for the sake uh to focus this morning we're going to politely move forward from the slide <laughs> and we're going to go forward so this season uh celebrates the arrival of this mythological king as i read the story and in the backdrop of my own uh sermon preparation i immediately recollected uh the historic arrival of someone on the shores of kerala and the ripple effect that arrival had across the country and across time until this very day in about 52 ad the year 52 ad one of jesus very own 12 disciples thomas arrived on the shores of what is today kerala he lived and ministered for about 20 years and by then there was a unique community of indian christians and the christian faith had very uniquely and very interestingly integrated with the local culture so unlike popular understanding christianity in india was not really a british import item or or one of those colonial powers and one of their import item in fact when the early western colonizers when they reached india they were surprised to find indian christians in various parts unfortunately the colonizers at time attempted to do a make over on indian christians and what we often today get to see in most churches is a very western brand of 
Christianity, very different from the original one that uh, Thomas had established. Hence, we have this modern day tag of Christianity being a very Western religion. Anyway, this morning, I would like to draw your attention to that disciple who came to India, Apostle Thomas. Now, there are not many mentions of Thomas uh, in the Gospels. There are a few passing references, but there is one significant incident for which he is known for. This morning, we will turn our focus to that significant passage and take away three characteristics on being a disciple of Jesus from the apostle of Thomas. That remarkable incident is recorded in the gospel according to John chapter 20 verses 24 to 28. John 20, 24 to 28. I would like to read it out to you and you may follow with me in your Bible or your Bible app or on the screen projection up ahead. Now Thomas, one of the 12, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. This is post-resurrection. So when Jesus had appeared to the disciples the first time, Thomas wasn't with them. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hand and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand to his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it to my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed, blessed are those who have not seen me and yet have believed. Now, before we draw out those three characteristics from this passage, we need to consider some context. And those who have done the, the, the DLC class knows what I'm talking about you need to know the context of the text or you risk misinterpretation. Anyway, let me move on. Firstly, the background of Thomas. And second, the background of this passage. The background of Thomas first. Like I said, there are very few references in the Gospels. And all those references about Thomas don't really picture him as an ideal disciple material. He comes across as someone who is pessimistic, as someone who is slow to understand, and, and a skeptic. For instance, in John eleven sixteen, you don't need to turn with me, there is this incident. This is just before uh, Jesus uh, goes and, and, and resurrects Lazarus. And, uh, and they just get to hear the news that Lazarus is very sick and he's close to death. And uh, the message is sent to Jesus, and Jesus uh, is planning his trip to, uh, to Bethany. That's where Lazarus was sick and lying. Uh, but at the same time, the disciples know that this is a place uh, that, faced, that they faced a lot of opposition, and people nearly stoned Jesus and his disciples. And so, and they were like, should we go, should we not go? It's a risky kind of situation. And he said, no, we will go, for, for there is something that God wants to do. And Thomas says to the rest of the disciples, let us go with him so that we will also die with him. Not very encouraging. Very pessimistic. Okay, I mean, if this is it, boys. Let's, let's say bye to everybody at home. In John 4, 14, uh, and this time the setting is of the Lord's table. And he is with his disciples. And Jesus is sort of pouring his heart out on what's going to happen next. And, and he's speaking in, in metaphors of my going away. And this is what's going to happen. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to go away and I'm going to prepare a place. And then, you know, you will, and then you will be with me. And Thomas just doesn't get all the metaphors. He's like, uh, where are you going? <laughs> what's the address 
what's the location uh and and I, i've been in some of these situations where where i've taught in, in in bible classes and you have poured out all your heart out and then one hand goes up and asks one of those questions and i'm like really you didn't get what i'm saying so he puts his hand up and says uh, excuse me address location where are you going so and he says lord we do not know where you're going so how can we know the way and now here in john 20 thomas skepticism of the resurrection of jesus christ and it is from here you have that english phrase doubting thomas it's it's from this unfortunate history does not end that way but unfortunately he is just known for that particular part all right moving on to the backdrop of this message as we just read thomas missed the first appearance of jesus christ to his disciples and no idea why so all the disciples were there and the first time jesus appears to them post resurrection thomas for some reason he sees out some bear and so this so when he, when he comes back everybody says we have seen the lord and he says nothing doing he needs visual he needs tactile proof of the resurrection a week later jesus appears again to the 12 and he gracefully obliges to thomas and to his demands and thomas is overwhelmed by jesus presence and he utters those memorable words my lord and my god and in turn jesus proclaims even more memorable words because you have seen me you now believe me blessed are those who will believe in me without seeing me and that includes you and me all right now here are three characteristics of being a disciple of jesus that we can take away from this passage and especially from the life of thomas uh you've noticed i've i've used this particular painting a few times i really like this painting there are many paintings about thomas uh, but this particular one i liked it's a painting uh, by carl hendrik block around the 1800s and i like thomas posture here and that's that's what struck me about this painting his posture of submission and this is when uh, he says my lord and my god and so and so this the painting all right first point the first thing that we can get glean from this passage is believing the lord i'm going to spend a little bit time longer on this point and then quickly go through point second and third in this chapter this chapter john uh, john who's a writer of this gospel uses the word believe six times in fact in this entire gospel of john he uses the word believe 90 times it's almost as if this entire gospel hinges on this one word believe remember john 316 probably the most a uh, famous word from the from scripture for god so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life so why was it hard for thomas to believe he obviously did not think that his fellow disciples they were lying to him or they were playing a prank on him to be fair to thomas resurrections are not common although he did see jesus resurrecting lazarus from the dead but still you see when jesus was with them on multiple occasions jesus would tell about his death and his resurrection I would like to think one of these two things happened with Thomas and please come along with me A he was selective in what he chose to believe about Jesus or B he had accepted fully accepted all that Jesus said but the last weeks incidents i'm talking about the week before resurrection his own eyes he gets to see jesus arrested him being prosecuted him being flogged all of that trauma 
hits him so hard that he completely is shattered and he's his belief is just gone out of the window let's unpack both those scenarios a selective belief parts of jesus message and that 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 we like and parts of this message that we are not quite sure what to make out of selective belief or b belief until very strong full enthusiastic till some loss or some pain hits you and then the entire thing is out of the window here it's important and insightful for us to note jesus responds he tells thomas stop doubting and believe now it's very interesting to note uh some bible scholars and theologians they have done, done some study on this word they've done some digging here and it says if you look at the word words that are used here doubting and believe it says these are not nouns they're actually verbs so jesus literally said to thomas do not become unbelieving but be believing do not become unbelieving but be believing therefore you see belief is an ongoing process belief is never static you can either be believing more and more with every day or you can either be unbelieving more and more every day it's not static i would like to encourage those of you hearing me this morning who are struggling with to believe or not to believe or either to be believing or or not be believing anymore step forward to jesus and be believing of him if we look at thomas disbelief positively we can see someone who is actually eager to believe when he says when he demands i want to see his side i want to see his nail pierced and it is not him being arrogant or him being rebellious or 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 a rejection it is someone who is not willing to be satisfied from a second hand source or a second hand information if you read the passage a little earlier a little ahead you come to know in, when jesus appeared the first time and and in fact because yes jesus did say that he will come back he will be resurrected but then the first time he appeared they thought he had seen a ghost and then just to put the disciples at ease he tells them peace but you shant i mean don't freak out and he says go ahead check me out jesus put your finger touch my side where they pierced it is i all that thomas said that what you've got to see i just want that i hear you but i want to have that that personal experience myself he earned to share in that personal experience and this is good this is good it's good for you and i would urge you it's good for you to follow accept and follow jesus not because of hearsay not because of someone's testimony all that is good but you have your own moment with the lord it says i believe that's why i say i often say in my classes you should know why you believe what you believe or you can be part of a church for so long you could have heard all this christian jargon and all of this stuff but you really haven't had that and so very important for you to know why you believe what you believe unlike teachings that say do not question or do not use your logic 
it's some people put logic and faith in as as two opposites rational and faith as two opposites the bible doesn't encourage for stuff like that I remember some time back somebody had told me there's a an ashram in pune where there is a, a sign that says please leave your footwear and your brains outside no the bible says jesus says love the lord your god with all your heart and with all your mind And some of us know what's it loving him with all our heart we need to come around loving him with all our mind it's brilliant when you love the lord with all your heart and with all your mind let me move on to the second point second experiencing the lord the second thing that we learned from thomas is the need for a first person experience with jesus and this point may be for some of you hearing me this morning you probably been coming to this church on and off or even regular yet you have not really earned for that personal experience with jesus may i encourage you this morning like thomas earn for that personal experience and my lord will definitely grant you that wish with all the things that we pray for of all the things that you would like and you come to this church for make it your prayer i just want to experience you personally a first hand experience and this is something that's very this this is something that's very close to my heart because i grew up in, in a christian family and what i experience for for a large part of my life was a second hand christianity you know what's a second hand christianity you know what's a second hand experience for those of you who've had second hand vehicles and a brand new one it's amazing right second hand it's it's somebody else somebody else story somebody else experience that you are living off a brand new one it's yours it's your story amen so may I encourage you i like to encourage you that if you've never had an experience with the lord and you've only heard of those in your family your parents or your or your relatives or your grandparents ask the lord also not the need for a one time experience with lord the second thing that we learn from this passage is the need for ongoing experiences with the lord and this may be for some others of you listening to me this morning where you can vouch for one or few such experiences that you've had but but that's in the past it's been a while since you've had an experience now and your faith now to quote from the bible is lukewarm it's neither refreshingly cold nor warm enough to enjoy lukewarm and if it's been a long time since you've experienced the lord from here you you get to hear that i have no idea how jesus how how thomas came to know the know jesus the bible really doesn't say the bible has some incidents of some other disciples of their first encounter and meeting with jesus we have no idea the bible is not very clear only when uh, the bible lists the names of all the 12 apostles you find thomas figuring in it so how did he come was he just curious about it did did he never have that that experience you don't know so in both cases it rules out a second hand experience of god or and it rules out a one time experience of god as thomas uttered my lord and my god it was not a statement of exclamation it's not like when we say oh my god no no thomas that statement at that moment was him recognizing and addressing this person that he walked lived with three and three and a half years and now recognizing oh my god and my lord that's who you are not just a good teacher not just somebody who's performed great miracles 
not just somebody who's really told some inspiring and great stories and parables my lord and my god please earn for that experience with jesus where you not just because you get to hear good stuff not just because he stole some amazing things but because he is lord and god and if you have not had that experience or if it's been a while since you've had that experience i would encourage you this morning have that experience where you have this post and says my lord and my god the last characteristic is from thomas discipleship is serving the lord serving the lord very simple believing the lord experiencing the lord serving the lord thomas his life would never be the same again after the result of that which happened to him like other disciples he would spend the rest of his life serving and proclaiming his lord and his god history records that he is probably the disciple of Jesus that traveled the farthest to proclaim the gospel and as i mentioned at the outset of this message he even came to the shores of our very own country shared the gospel and was eventually speared to death in the year 72 AD you see believing the lord and experiencing the lord will inevitably lead you to serve the lord it's it's a natural outcome it's a natural outcome you can't be somebody who's believing and 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 who is experiencing but not serving the lord it's a natural outcome because you automatically will go out and do that which god has called you to serve being a disciple of jesus is not just about following it's about helping others follow him and there are some among, among us like like the pastors of this church and and others who know how the lord has gifted you to serve and 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 they're doing it faithfully and fruitfully the bible encourages especially when paul writes to timothy he says you've got a gift you have a gift to serve people to serve and he says fan into flame the bible has a lot of expressions that are very very pictures you've got a gift it's like a flame it's like a little bit of fire it says fan it fan into flame this gift that you have because that's meant to help somebody that's hurting that needs god that needs to fan into flame and the opposite of that is if you leave it as it is it could get snuffed out some of you are sitting see i i believe everybody who comes to know the lord god automatically gifts him or her with the gift to serve with the gift to serve the bible says it automatically comes you come you know the lord he he definitely gives you a gift it's what you do with that gift either you can fan into into flame and bless the many around you or you can just let it be and it just dies out or it gets extinguished and your gift to serve it could be right here in this very church or it could be in your areas of access and influence at work i have met both sorts both sorts of people immensely gifted and the church is immensely blessed by those gifts that a person or a group of individuals bring to the church and and, and just because i don't want to sort of take up names and leave some names as i look across right now i know people who are gifted in a certain way and they do that not just sundays they they, they do that they bring that gift and that gift is a blessing 
and at the same time i know of some of them who are gifted but they're just not sure how they what what they can do in the church and sometimes they see in places outside how that gift comes into play of providing needs for those who are in poverty or those who are uh or being or being oppressed for the welfare of women and children for the welfare of justice god gives you know it recognize it earn as much as you want to believe and experience and uh, all of that earn your i want to serve in the way in which you have gifted me wherever it may be serve the lord this morning from the life of this disciple as he started out he seems to be unsure pessimistic and you're wondering how will this story end i want to tell you that history records that the life and the ministry of the apostle thomas ends on a high and the very reason some of us are sitting here in this chair is because of his labor in our land and you see serving the lord goes a long long way years and years i've been in ministry for about 20 plus 25 years now and nothing warms my heart than when someone comes to me and says oh i remember you you were speaking in that camp and you said this and that just changed my life all over it's 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 wonderful when you touch lives and when all you your belief and your experience you're able to transfer that in serving the lord Thank you.